All right, so today we're gonna to be measuring a bunch of different temperatures and trying to analyze how the temperatures of different parts and fluids affect power. So into the engine bay, we have four thermocouples. We have one going inside of the plenum. plenum. Let's measure the intake temperature. We have our intake air temperature. And we have one sitting over there to measure ambient engine bay temperature. And we put it over there because that's roughly where most people's uh, air filters end up. And we have one strapped to the back of the cylinder head here. In addition to that, we have coolant temp and oil temp that we'll be monitoring from inside of the car. So we'll do a bunch of different polls. We'll try and isolate different temperatures if we can and see which temperature relates to what horsepower numbers. We're going to back up that poll and make way more than I thought it was going to make. So, as we all know, per the internet, the first thing you need to do to your car is to add a cold air intake because cold air makes more power. So, we're going to uh, put some science behind that today and actually test it real world uh, on a Miata. Once again, we're using our 99NB because it is a great test mule. And we've got sensors everywhere. And specifically, we're looking at air intake, plenum temperature, coolant oil, and engine bay temperature. So there won't be a whole lot of flashy videos in this video, it's mostly going to be graphs and data, so strap in. Uh, we did a bunch of different polls and we basically did a bunch of tricks to try and uh, simulate different temperatures of different things. So we ran a hood open, hood closed, we heat soaked it, and what we figured out really quickly is it was really hard to isolate one item. So the coolant was easy, that stayed right at a buck eighty the whole time. The rest of the temperatures were almost impossible to isolate. So if our engine bay temperature went up, the oil temp and the air temp also went up. So the data, as we look at it, uh, we'll be looking at a real world example. I can't just change one temperature without everything else changing with it. So let's jump right in and have a look. We did eight polls testing different things, but poll one, four, and eight are what we're going to stare at. One was the coldest. Everything was cold. Um, basically got the car up to as cold as I dare before doing a full pull on it. And then we ran all the way to the other extreme where we heat soaked it as much as we could on the dyno. And here's those three graphs. So blue is our coldest. Our air intake was only 64 degrees. Our plenum temp was 92. And we made 120 horsepower peak and uh, about 104 foot pounds. Now the first thing to note with the other two curves up here is that they are perfect copies just shifted up and down. So we are not seeing a restriction or a limitation somewhere. The loss of power is exactly the same across the curve. So as we go through to run four, um, our intake air temp is now up to 95 degrees. Our plenum is now up to 97 and we picked up three horsepower and almost four foot-pounds of torque. Go on to our hottest run where we had the thing completely heat soaked. Our air intake temp was now 95 degrees. Our plenum temp was 111. And we picked up another two horsepower and another two foot-pounds of torque. Now this is backwards of what the internet says, right? As every, all of our temperatures got hotter and hotter and hotter, we kept making power. Well, look at the oil temp. As oil gets hot, it thins out and takes less energy to, to rotate and to pump it. So what we're seeing here is not that hot air makes more power. What we're seeing is that the losses due to cold oil is higher than the losses due to hot air. And since it's tough to get really cold air and maintain really hot oil, this is going to be a real world trend that you see here. So does this mean it doesn't matter what temperature your air, incoming air is. No, obviously cold air is denser, 
Uh, but on a naturally aspirated car, the density change between 60 degrees and 90 degrees is not extreme. We have seen on boosted applications where we're compressing the air and then we're also heating the air with the turbo. Yeah, you get up to 200 degree intake air and the horsepower plummets. So a big intercooler helps helps make power again. But on a naturally aspirated car, the, the delta is just not there. Now, watch this next poll. Uh, so there's three numbers on here. The top one is the air intake. The second one is the plenum temperature. And then the third one is the surrounding engine bay temperature, which is measured right next to the exhaust header. Now the key thing to watch here is watch as soon as we start the pull, watch that engine bay temp just dive. Now why is this? Well, quick napkin math. This engine at 6,000 RPM is consuming about 175 CFM of air. So 175 cubic feet of air per minute. Drop that down, it's about 3 cubic feet per second. Quick rough calculation, the engine bay of the car holds about 12 cubic feet give or take, even with the, with the engine sitting in there. So every four seconds, if the engine is breathing the air in the bay, it will have completely replaced all of the air inside of the engine bay. Where did that air that it replaced with come from? From outside. And we don't, this is on a dyno, this is like worst case scenario. If we're driving, we have air flow. There's air being sucked out of the car and replaced. We're not breathing stagnant, hot air from sitting around the header. We're breathing air that just entered the engine bay. And this makes a lot of sense. If if there was a massive efficiency gain from sucking in air right off the surface of the pavement, then you'd see that a lot more in OE applications, but you don't. Um, and the reason is that the air under the hood, yes, it's slightly hotter than the air outside, but on a naturally aspirated car, there's not a huge power differential, and you're not breathing in 200 degrees stagnant air. The other interesting thing to note, we're going to play this run again, is watch how quickly the intake temperature and the plenum temperature equalize with each other and then they stay really tight and we saw this throughout all of our runs on the coldest run the air outside was 60 degrees and the plenum was 92. then we got to our hottest run and we were breathing in air that was 113 degrees and the plenum was 93. the plenum temp being a huge chunk of air and a big piece of metal seems to to dampen whatever temperature air is coming in. So the air basically will expand if it was breathing in cold air when it reaches the hot plenum, and the air will contract a little bit if it was breathing in air that's hotter than the plenum it entered. So the, the total spread we saw from the coldest run we could do to the hottest run we could do in terms of plenum temperature was about 15 degrees. That was the biggest spread we could achieve on the dyno. So, what's the takeaway? Um, the takeaway is, while air temperature makes a decent sized difference on a forced induction application, it does not appear to make a massive difference on a naturally aspirated engine. Especially not one running on the stock tune with no other modifications to it. So, I'm not going to break my back trying to achieve the coldest air possible, especially if that produces other concerns like sucking in water, um, which would be bad. The bigger factor in terms of power is correctly controlling my oil temp and my coolant temp. So if I have optimum numbers I can see, um, too hot stuff breaks, too cold I'm giving up horsepower. So putting in um, systems to really accurately control those two numbers is going to give me a bigger difference in my total power output. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Um, be sure to check out our website uh, and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.